Good morning. Uh, my name is Andrew Hastings. Uh, me and my wife, Leah, and our three kids. Um, if you don't know who my kids are, you're, it's probably pretty obvious. They're the ones that are wreaking havoc and running crazy all the time. And then Nora's the cutest baby on the face of the earth. So, sorry, if you don't agree. Um, so, for um, the last few years, me and my wife, we've uh, been kind of, we've been focusing more on trying to understand the Old Testament. Uh, we, it, it hit us a few years ago that it was like, we, we don't have the story down. I couldn't just tell you, like, what the narrative is and how often um, in the New Testament, how often it is referenced and called back to. I mean, it's like when your eyes are open to it, it is, it's almost every, it's every page, almost every sentence. They're calling back to the Old Testament. And there's these hyperlinks that are going back. And so when it came to the Last Supper, uh, me and my wife were talking about this. And I always, for, we, we were wondering where Jesus, when he gets to the, to the cup, uh, what he was referencing. Because he's not functioning in a vacuum almost everything he does, he's referencing something. And so uh, recently um, I was at a communion service and the Last Supper was pre presented in a way that was new to me. And it was one of those little glass shattering moments of like, oh, this makes so much more sense. Um, so at that time, the Last Supper uh, Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the Passover feast. And Jesus was going through the ritual, and he picked up what was arguably the third cup, the cup of redemption, which is during the last supper, or during Passover is set aside for later. But Jesus instead, he hands it to the disciples and says, this is my new covenant, take and drink, um, which is outrageous for a few reasons, because one, he's declaring the Messiah is here, and two, at that time, and in that culture, what the disciples would have heard when Jesus said, this is my covenant, take and drink, while he was handing them a cup full of wine, what they heard was, will you marry me? Um, so let me back up. At that time, in that era, when a guy wanted to marry a girl, he would go to the girl and the girl's father, and he would draw up a marriage covenant. And the potential groom would then pay the bride price to even get the chance to ask her to marry. And once it was drawn up to steal the covenant, the groom would, in front of the bride's family, and probably the village, pour a cup of wine and offer it to her, saying, this is a covenant of my blood, take and drink. At which point, she could decline and set the cup aside, or she could accept his proposal and drink the wine. After this, they would part ways, and he would go to his town, and she would go home to hers. She would no longer be called by her name. She was referred to as one who was bought with a price. She was also encouraged to regularly drink small amounts of wine to remind herself that her groom was coming for her. The groom would prepare a place in his town for his bride at his home and also promised to not drink wine until the day that they would be together again. And they wouldn't talk the whole time during the engagement period, which is six months up to a year. The groom would have his best man play messenger and run back and forth carrying notes. Um, so now the groom didn't get to decide when the bridal suite, what he's preparing for his bride was finished. He had to wait for the father's approval. The father decided when it, was he, when it was ready and would say, it is done, go and get her. At which point, he'd gather his groomsmen and they'd march over to her town. They'd come unannounced, blowing their little shofars, these little ram's horns. And she'd be waiting every day in building anticipation, not knowing the day or the time or the hour. 
And when she heard the horn, she'd walk down the stairs and essentially down the aisle. So doesn't that sound familiar? Um, I, I mean, Jesus says to his disciples, this is my covenant, take and drink. At which point, I don't think the, cup, the disciples were probably too weirded out by this. Jesus has been flipping their world on its head for three years. Um, when Jesus says to them, we're not going to see each other for a while, but don't worry. I will send my best man, my spirit. He's going to relay messages between us. That's how we're going to communicate. In the meantime, you're going to go home, and you will not know the day or the time or the hour that I will come back for you. But you're going to be referred to as one who is bought with a price. But I will go to my father's house and prepare a place for you. None of us know what that time will be, um, but the father knows. Jesus has asked us into this covenant relationship, and we get to participate, um, which I love that we do this every other week, that we get to participate in communion in remembering what he has done, but also we get to anticipate um, our future with him. We get to look forward, and it's the remembrance of him um, that we get to Every day we're closer to being with him. So will the servers please come forward? And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, this, is, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us, um, for your sacrifice, for paying the price. Um, we also look forward to being with you again. Help us love our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>